Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at noon. As many of you probably have noticed, it is a hot and muggy Friday afternoon in the FM Metro. Because of the heat, our First Alert Storm Team has declared it a First Alert Weather Day. Taking a live look outside right now, you can see that the sun is shining bright, bringing the extreme heat with it. From what we can expect today and over the weekend, let's check in with meteorologist Justin Fanfarelli. And thank you, Callie, and good afternoon, everybody. Yes, yeah, so we are seeing just a few passing clouds staying dry out there right now, but the big story is the heat and the humidity. Let's take a look at the current temperatures around the region, and most of us are right now into the lower 80s in the northern half of our viewing area, upper 80s into the southern valley and lakes country, and closer to 90 degrees as you make your way out toward Jamestown. The humidity is above oppressive levels right now with most of us having dew point values between 75 and 77 degrees and it's just going to get worse. We have that southerly wind between 15 and 30 miles per hour continuing to pump in the warm and humid air. Satellite loop shows nothing as of yet, just a few clouds into uh, portions of northwestern Minnesota, some showers into central and western North Dakota, but there is a chance of some strong to severe thunderstorms as the heat breaks going through this evening and again tomorrow evening. Until then, we're going to stay into the 90s with impressive, Im oppressive humidity. Uh, we're going to tell you what to expect uh, as we go through tonight and tomorrow with those storm chances, and then you'll probably enjoy the next seven days. Uh, we'll get into that coming up later in the newscast. All right, looking forward to it. Thanks, Justin. And near for you at noon, officials in St. Paul, Minnesota have recovered the body of a missing child from the Mississippi River. Searchers have been looking for the 11-year-old boy since Tuesday. He went under the water in the river and never resurfaced at Hidden Falls Regional Park in St. Paul. Bystanders tried to find the boy before first responders got there. Authorities say the search was difficult because of the murky water and fast current. And North Dakota's Republican governor is denouncing an anti-LGBTQ resolution that was passed by hundreds of delegates, delegates this spring by mail-in ballots, calling it insulting and divisive. Doug Burgum issued a statement yesterday blasting the resolution, which includes the assertion that many LGBT practices are unhealthy and dangerous. The state's GOP is now apologizing for the language, promising it will be changed at a future meeting. And we're hours away from Minnesota's mask mandate set forth by Governor Tim Walz, which will requir require all people in public places to wear face masks. But how will the new rule be enforced? Just like Moorhead PD, most local law enforcement agencies we spoke with say they're taking a more educational stance on the new order. We don't have the time and the manpower to actually go out looking for people or, or responding to calls um, to cite people for not wearing a mask. Local departments tell us you'll only get a warning for your first offense. If you are cited, you could face up to a $100 fine. Business owners found in violation could face up to a $1,000 fine and up to 90 days in jail. The Minnesota Department of Health has reported updated numbers for the COVID-19 pandemic within the state. 773 new cases of the illness have been confirmed and five new deaths have been linked to COVID-19. There are now 5,040 active cases in the state and 1,566 total deaths. Over 42,000 patients are listed as recovered. North Dakota is confirming 124 new COVID-19 cases within the state, as well as two new de deaths linked to the illness. The victims were a man in his 50s and a man in his 80s from McIntosh and Williams counties, respectively. Both had underlying health conditions. 99 total deaths have been linked to COVID-19 in North Dakota, and there are now 970 active cases. 37 patients are in the hospital and 4,545 are listed as recovered. Nearly half of Americans affected by a layoff during the pandemic believe those jobs are never coming back. 47% of Americans think that jobs lost are definitely or probably gone forever. According to the Associated Press Nork Center for Public Affairs Research, that's a sharp change from April when 78% of people in a household with the pandemic job loss thought it was temporary. According to the AP, that means roughly 10 million people will need new employers and maybe new professions. 
The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has updated its quarantine guidelines for people diagnosed with COVID-19. The agency says patients with mild to moderate illness can come out of isolation after 10 days without symptoms instead of 14. They also no longer need a negative test in order to return to work or other activities. The changes come after studies show the large majority of COVID patients were no longer infectious after 10 days. The CDC says with those more se severe illness may need to quarantine for 20 days. And the U.S. has now surpassed 4 million confirmed coronavirus cases. More than 144,000 Americans have died, and the CDC now projects the death toll could reach 175,000 by August 15th. The states driving the surge are mostly in the south, like Florida, where President Trump has decided to partly cancel his party's national convention. Laura Podesta brings us more. President Trump is canceling the part of the Republican National Convention that was set to be held in Jacksonville next month. The timing for this event is not right, it's just not right with what's happened recently, the flare up in Florida. The state reported a record 173 new coronavirus deaths yesterday. And I'll still do a convention speech in a different form. This distillery south of Jacksonville was counting on the RNC for some much needed business. It would have meant a, a very nice, you know, boost in uh, in sales and income. Owner Philip McDaniel understands the risks are too high. I think in the in the bigger balance, it's the right call. Miami Mayor Francis Suarez says the largest spread of the virus is coming from within homes and suggested drastic measures. Particularly if they have a multi-generational household wearing masks indoors, and also respecting social distance when they're at home. For the third day in a row, more than 1,000 Americans died from the coronavirus. Texas had 173 deaths. If all of you had the opportunity to walk into our hospitals, you would see warehouses of human beings, if you will, on stretchers and on ventilators. But in Arizona, new cases and hospitalizations are trending downward. There's no victory lap today. There's there's no celebration. Governor Doug Ducey indefinitely extended the state's closure of businesses like bars and gyms. Laura Podesta, CBS News. Ducey said the order closing businesses will be re-examined every two weeks. He included schools in that too and promised in two weeks the state will have more information about how and when they can return in-person learning. And Walmart is expanding the number of its health clinics. That could be a game changer in the healthcare industry. Walmart will open six additional Walmart health clinics in the greater Atlanta area by the end of the year. That would bring its total clinics that offer primary care, dental exams, and other medical services to at least 13. Walmart is the country's largest private employer, grocer, and is looking to become a major player in healthcare too. The clinics offer expansive services including annual checkups, x-rays, hearing services, and mental health counseling. Coming up at noon for millions of America's renters, there's a cliff approaching. Enhanced unemployment benefits that may have kept many afloat will expire soon. We'll tell you what you need to know next.